Hey, how's it going everyone? What is up? And welcome to my Batman Arkham Knight review for PS4 and PC. So, I finally gave in last week and purchased Arkham Knight on the PS4. Uh, I bought it on the PC, I pre-ordered it for the PC um, about two months ago because it was cheap on G2A and I got the premium edition cheap. And, um, well yeah, it was broke. And my usual rule is give a game a month to see if a patch comes out. And if one doesn't come out in a month, alright, buy on another system. But this time, it's fucking Batman. I couldn't wait a month. It, it, I just couldn't wait. And I spent $135 on this game. So, uh, yeah. But, is it worth it? Let's find out. Let's jump right into the review. Now, real quick, before we get into it, giant spoiler alert. If you didn't see it in the title, I spoil pretty much everything in the game that you can think of except for the details of exactly how they happened. So if you haven't played the game, go play it, and then come back and watch this, alright? Just pause the video, go play it, and come back, alright? I love you. Now, don't let me spoil anything. Let's get into it. So we're going to start out with talking about the game mechanics. They improved on almost everything. Combat, gadgets, hell, even soaring through the sky, it all looks better, more fluid and improved, um, but you know, that's not what everyone's bitching about, everyone likes to focus on the bad instead of the good, and I guess for it to be a review, we have to do the fucking same, uh, but what everyone is mainly bitching about in the game is the Batmobile, better named the Bat Tank, because that shit ain't no mobile, ain't no mobile. Uh, and a lot of people don't like it because they think it was overused and it outstayed its welcome. And for the most part, I agree. I feel less Batmobile would have been better. If you didn't have to use it on all of the Riddler challenges, I believe you have to do it, use it on all of the Riddler challenges, I'm not sure. And a few other side missions, I feel it would have been alright. Uh, in story mode, it was a little overused. It was a little reliant on it for, uh, getting past you know, puzzles that you wouldn't be able to get past, you wouldn't be able to move forward in the game without it, and to me, once it does that for the third time, it's a little too reliant, you know what I'm saying? But the part that I don't agree on was everyone saying how unfun it was. Uh, everyone bitching about the drone battles, yeah, there was a lot of drone battles, but come on! How is it on fun? Yeah, you could get a little repetitive. Like I said, there's a lot of them. And maybe even, it might even start to seem like horde mode with the drones. But god damn, it was still fun blowing up all those drones in the fucking bat tank. Alright? To me, it was really, really fun. Hardly ever got repetitive. I may have, sa I may have said to myself once, how many times am I going to have to do this again? <laughs> and I only said it once because... As the game went on, you started battling different kinds of tanks. There were tanks that uh, started shooting three shots at you, two shots. They'd start to shoot faster, shoot slower. you get locked on by the tanks with rocket launchers. And then in comes the flying drones that would try to fuck your day up by, um, you know, shooting rockets on the ground that you'd have to dodge. And it, it, there's no way to get bored when there's like... 30 of those things on the map at the same time trying to kill you. There's no human, there's no way you could get bored. Um, I just really enjoyed speeding around in the Batmobile, and I really enjoyed blowing shit up in the back tank. It was just fun to me, but to each their own. Also, a lot of people were upset that we really didn't get any boss battles. And admittedly, I was a little upset too. We didn't get an Arkham Knight boss battle, Deathstroke, Scarecrow, Two-Face, Face, can't say hush, uh, hush, anyone. It was a little disappointing. And even the Deathstroke uh, boss battle, I haven't gotten to do it yet on my playthrough, but I have heard that it was literally just a tank battle. And to me, that sounds fucking horrible. With one of the greatest assassins ever, you're in a tank battle with him? What? I mean, but moving on. Now on to the story. I'm going to give a second spoiler warning here because I know people like to s skip around in uh, videos. I know I find myself doing it a lot, even in reviews. So if you didn't see it in the title at the beginning, I'm giving it here again. Spoiler warning, alright? Now into the story. Uh, it was great through the first half, and then it really dipped off uh, around exactly half. 
and then it didn't really pick back up until 75%. Although, like, the beginning of the game, and just all the characters, like, everything that happened in the game, I enjoyed. The plot twist with Barbara Gordon, Scarecrow being the main villain, and even the Arkham Knight. Yes, I like what they did with Jason Todd, aka the Arkham Knight, aka Red Hood. Everyone say it was like saying he was being too whiny and all that. Yeah, you would too. Uh, you would be too if you were trying to kill the man who you thought abandoned you to die to the Joker, and you kept failing over and over again, and kept being told to wait and wait while you were trying to kill him. Uh, I'd say I'd be pretty whiny too. I'd say I'd be bitching a lot, you know. Whatever. What I didn't like is how Jason Todd, not the Arkham Knight, only had a few scenes out of the Arkham Knight character. Like, we literally only got to see two scenes in present day of Jason Todd without the voice modulator and where you can see his face. Or with the red hood, you know, thing on cracked or whatever. It really upset me because I was looking forward to an under the red hood story, you know, esque story arc for him where Bruce finds out who he is around halfway and starts trying to help him understand what actually happened and how he never stopped looking for him until the Joker sent footage of him dying and then over the next 20 to 30 percent Jason goes missing and re-emerges to save Bruce from something in some way and over the last 30 to 20 percent you get multiple missions with Jason as Red Hood helping you in um the way that Nightwing and Robin do so you get to play as him he's not just a a character in you know a DLC that lasts 15 minutes you get to play as him and do the whole dual combat thing that was added I think that would have been really amazing and a lot more satisfying to us Red Hood fans I was really looking forward to like more Jason Todd in the game because it was obvious who the Arkham Knight was while I am grateful we got Red Hood eventually in the story and he does save Bruce at the end, I think he could have played a bigger role as Red Hood in the game. Also, I found out there were tape recordings like in Arkham Asylum and there were three Arkham Knight ones where Jason is talking to Barbara and you can tell he still cares for everyone except for Bruce. He asked how Alfred was and made it clear if anyone hurt Barbara they were a dead man which is fucking cool and at the same time disappointed because they needed that to be in the main story that should have been a cutscene. I can see why it wasn't because you know Jason would have been revealed too quickly but it gave insight into the character and it showed he wasn't just a cold-hearted killer who would do anything at all to hurt Batman, even hurt the other Bat family. It showed that he wouldn't do that, and I just love how that was included. Again, a little disappointing uh, that it wasn't in the main game, but it's still there all the same. Overall, I loved the story. I loved all the obstacles that Batman had to overcome with Barbara dying at the start, the Arkham Knight causing trouble, and the whole cast of other villains that you work to take down as the game goes along, even if some of those could have been fleshed out more, like Two-Face and Penguin, you don't really feel like they're a big threat, they're just three or four missions that you have to do a piece for them, and taking them down isn't too satisfying either, but they're still there, they're, they're still an obstacle. And while they weren't there for long, it's still cool to have them there because the game doesn't focus on them. I mean, it's just like in Arkham City where you take out Two-Face in the beginning of the game and I don't remember if you see him at all again for the rest of the game. It's just like that for everyone bitching. I had to clear that up. And Scarecrow was an alright villain. Uh, what's best about him is he was unexpected. No one would expect the chump that Killer Croc got a hold of in Arkham Asylum would come back two or three years later to take over Gotham. It was cool to see uh, them take a less threatening villain than the Joker, Black Mask, or Bane and turn them scary as fuck. Even if you really never have a confrontation with them, it's all cutscenes for the most part. Uh, you could argue that the end scene where Bruce is trying to like shut out Joker, that is the boss fight with Scarecrow. But yeah, not really. He was still a good threatening villain though that with the help of Jason Todd, of course. But another great villain that no one expected to return did. The Joker. Joker returned 
voiced by Mark Hamill again, and he was easily one of the best parts of the game. He made me laugh out loud so many times during the game. He was always trying to break Batman from the inside because he was a figment of Scarecrow's scare toxin. It was just great with the Joker constantly taunting Batman, trying to corrupt him, and it was overall funny, and he also gave us one of the most disturbing scenes in a video game that I've ever played. It was multiple scenes, actually, but it was him torturing Jason Todd, trying to break him and make him hate Batman. And it works. I mean, look at the game. Uh, but in the last torture scene, the one that made me, you know, it got to me, uh, Joker tricks him and asks, say, I never asked, but what is the bat's real name? Are you ready to give up that secret? And Jason says, of course, sir, it's... And fucking Joker shoots him in the heart. It's the only time a game made me say, holy shit, that was hard to watch, ever. But overall, Joker was a great addition to the game. Uh, both of Jason Todd's characters were done good, and Scarecrow was a pretty cool unexpected villain. But now I talk about the endings, I'll give a third spoiler warning for any of you skipping around motherfuckers, listen up, I'm talking about the endings, alright? So if you don't want to know, don't watch, alright? Let's do this. As far as endings go, the first one was alright with a few holes. Jason disappearing with no explanation, and no explanation for what happens, happens, I don't know why I said happens like that, to the other Bat family, like Robin, Nightwing, and Oracle. But that's not the one that really got to me. The second one wasn't that great at all, alright? It raised more questions than it answered. Hell, it raised questions with its answers. It made no sense. Basically, after you 100% the game, keep in mind next Riddler trophies, trophies, collectibles, every side mission, you go to Wayne Manor. Alfred closes the door and Wayne Manor explodes. And everything, everyone thinks Bruce Wayne is dead. Bruce Wayne and Batman are dead because they're the same person. But then it cuts to a husband, wife, and son walking into an alleyway, no, alleyway, no doubt alluding to Bruce Wayne and his parents. And then out of nowhere, a Batman-looking figure is shown on a rooftop with a gangster saying, Batman's dead, we're not scared of him anymore, or something like that. And then the back starts to float like Superman, maybe hinting at a Superman game, and then bursts into flames, and a bat flies at the camera, aka thugs, and it just, it just raised more questions than it answered. It raised questions with its answers. How? It gave no idea what the Bat family is up to and makes you ask, was that Bruce, or Jason, or Tim, maybe Terry, Dick, who the fuck was it? It made no sense. It just bothered me because you shouldn't end one of the most amazing superhero trilogies ever on a cliffhanger. Yes, I said trilogies, Origins doesn't count. Alright, get out of here. Unless we get DLC that explains it, or at least gives us some insight on the Bat Fam, like a big story where Red Hood, Red Robin, Nightwing, and Oracle work to take down a new villain, or a group of old villains that didn't really get much light in um, the original game, like, uh, you know, a big Two-Face and Penguin things going on, like a big war again, I don't know, um, and they could sort of explain it with that as they go or something, uh, but I doubt we're gonna get that for some reason, I just, I don't feel like we're gonna get that, I, for some reason, I feel like in my head, it's mostly going to be prequel DLCs for some reason, that's not what I paid $40 for, Bad Girl, I haven't got to play it yet, I have not got to play it yet, I'm gonna play it later, later as in yesterday, because I'm recording this a day before I upload it, so yeah, I, I don't know, I just feel like they're all going to be prequels. I mean, we still have five months of DLC left, and who knows if that's just going to be five months of two more story DLCs and like six more costumes. I don't know yet. We just need an explanation for what happened. Hap Why am I saying happened so weird? Happen, happening. We just need an explanation uh, for what happened in that ending, and I'll be A-OK -okay with the nightfall. But all right. Um, some of you people who are on PS4 don't have a PC and are living under a rock at the moment, 
might not understand why I'm about to get so mad, but we're going to talk about the PC version shortly, which is what I originally bought. Like I said, it's still in an unplayable state where I can't even play at all. I'm not exaggerating or anything. I literally am playing Batman Pictures of Arkham Knight because of how bad my stuttering is. And to beat it all, the patch won't be coming until September. Yeah, a small patch is coming in August. But still fucking August? And it's not even a full goddamn patch? That's bullshit. I, I only paid $35 for the premium edition on G2A. And you might say you didn't pay full price so you have no damn reason to bitch. Yes, I fucking do, alright? I had who the Arkham Knight was spoiled for me even what if it was obvious, and I had what happened to Barbara at the beginning of the game, even if it doesn't stick, spoiled for me while I waited a fucking month for a patch, and then gave in and paid an extra $100 for the premium edition on PS4. So yeah, I can bitch. I'm not a rich person, okay? You have any idea how much work I'm going to have to do to earn back that $100, or pay off that $100 and earn more money yeah i can bitch all right uh it was honestly one of the worst pc ports of all time and it was mainly uh wb's fault warner brothers fault for making rock steady outsource to a third party dev and with only eight weeks to fully port the damn thing i just does i just hope this doesn't happen with the rumored superman game uh that is again rumored to be coming uh from wb montreal the guys who made Arkham Origins, which I actually enjoyed, to the contrary, or to, to the contrary of what everyone else thought about it, I can't speak, guys. I really can't speak right now. Overall, I really enjoyed the game, though. I thought the story was great. The characters were great. I just wish we got more Red Hoods. The villain was an unexpected one, which was cool. It was like a 720 kick flip off the ladder on Rust. Quit scoping your brain. You didn't know it was coming. And the Batmobile, while it overstayed its welcome a little bit, uh, was still fucking fun. Like, it's the fucking Batmobile. How can it not be fun? Like I said, the only things that got to me was uh, really the nightfall ending and how the game really slowed down at around 50% and didn't pick back up until 70 or 75%, uh, percent, which I'd say is only about an hour or two. And the main story is like 10 to 12 hours, maybe 13. Um... And that with the, you know, no real boss battles, which was a little sad, but I'm not crying about it. It's not some game-breaking thing. Oh my god, no boss battles, what the fuck, you know, zero out of shit. I'm not like that. Um, another thing that really bothered me, sort of, is how Raish never returned. Raish Agul, he was the mastermind between, uh, behind Arkham City, I believe, if I remember correctly. And, I mean, he's still alive. So where the fuck is he? I mean, at the end of the game, he fell on spikes, but then you go down there and his body's gone. Where'd he go? <laughs> you know? DLC, I'll assume. But with that being said, I give Batman Arkham Knight a solid 9 out of 10 on PS4 and Xbox One. And a 4 out of 10 on PC. It is a definite must-buy for any Bat fan, even if you already know what happens in a lot of the game, like I did. Well, not a lot, but some. It was a great game from a great studio and a great ending to an amazing series of games. Um, yeah, like I said, buy it if you're a Bat fan. If you're on PC, you could take a chance. I hear it's working for some people, but I wouldn't. 4 out of 10, I would not. Alright, just get it on PS4 or Xbox One. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, like, comment, and subscribe. But let me know what you thought about my review and Batman Arkham Knight in the comments below. And yeah, I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.